Hello, today we're going to be talking about uh, Unit 1.2, Resource Allocation and Economic Systems. So resource allocation, as the name would imply, is how you utilize your resources. And there are four types of resources uh, in economics. It's land, labor, capital, and entrepreneurship. The first two are pretty self-explanatory. Capital is basically machinery and stuff you purchase that aren't land and labor. Uh, sorry, isn't land or labor. Uh, entrepreneurship is the know-how and the skills of how knowing how to run a business. And basically, uh, there are three main uh, economic questions to answer when it comes to resource allocation. The first one is uh, obviously the resource allocation question, which is which goods and services to uh, do these resources go into? So uh, yeah, that's the resource allocation question. The second question is how to produce these uh, goods and services. So uh, this is a production question and it's basically asking how, uh, what machinery and what labor we use to produce the product. And three is uh, a distribution question. So it's who will receive these products. And that's basically asking who the target consumers are, who's going to be buying them or who's going to be using the services. Uh, now uh, on to economic systems. So basically there are two economic systems that will be mentioned here. Uh, one of them is the free market and the other one is the centrally planned economy. So another name for the free market is the capitalist uh, economy and the centrally planned is also known as a command economy. Uh, there are, you've probably learned about these in your class, uh, maybe in social studies class or history class. But basically they were started by uh, the free market. The concept of the free market is started by the Scottish economist named Adam Smith and the centrally planned economy is started by a man named Karl Marx, who I believe is a German economist. Uh, there's a good chance you've heard about these two in your history class, and you probably learned about uh, communism from Karl Marx and his ideas about how the economy should be. But most of economics, uh, at least for the AP courses, will be focused on the free market. But it is important to note that Basically, every country on Earth has sort of a mixed economy. And what a mixed economy is, is exactly what you think it is. It's a combination of free market and centrally planned. And I'll be going into what those mean in a second. So a free market uh, allows the government to answer the three questions from before. So those are the three questions over here. Uh, in a free market, individuals and the individual companies are answering uh, which goods and services to produce, how to produce those goods, and who will receive those goods. But in a command economy, it's the government who decides these three questions. They are the ones who are deciding which goods and services to produce and who will receive them, how to produce them, and all that. Uh, so a mixed economy is basically going back to the mixed economy thing. A mixed economy is basically mostly a capitalist market, but the government will decide to intervene when it feels like there's something wrong with the system. Uh, uh, an example of this that will be mentioned in Unit 6 of AP Macroeconomics is basically like when a company is causing pollution or is actually having a positive externality, which is the opposite of uh, something like pollution, which is a negative externality, but I'm not going to confuse you with those terms right now because you don't even know them yet. Basically, the government will usually intervene by taxing or subsidizing a, um, a, a system or a company. And the last concept I want to add is the idea of the invisible hand. So the invisible hand states that society will meet its goals as individuals pursue their self for their own self-interest. I know that doesn't quite make sense, but it's actually really simple. So I'm gonna use a really common example, which is simply purchasing food. So, so the guy on the right here is going up to the hot dog stand to buy hot dogs. The guy on the hot, uh, working the hot dog stand is selling hot dogs to make money. Um, the reason why this is 
so both both of these people are acting in their own self-interest. The guy on the right here is hungry and he wants to buy hot dogs. So he would rather have give up his money for the hot dogs because he doesn't need that money as much as he wants the hot dog. The guy working the hot dog stand does wants the guy the other guy's money more than he wants the hot dogs. So in this exchange, both people get what they want and give up what they don't want as much. Um, I'll be explaining more about uh, those types of things in economics in later videos, but basically uh, uh, society is regressing because everyone is not being forced. No one is being, sorry, I, I should reword that. No one is being forced to make a trade that they do not benefit from. That's basically what the invisible hand is, and that's the entire video. Thank you for watching.